Welcome back, compadres, and today we're talking about bottom hole flowing pressure because we know management won't get us what we want because they're scrubs like that. Just kidding. Today I'm going to show you how to code the average temperature and compressibility factor method to get bottom hole flowing pressure for a dry gas well, and we're gonna, we're going to compare it to a uh, we're going to validate it against the textbook example problem. So let's get started. The reference we're using today is Petroleum Production Engineering, a computer-assisted approach. This is where I'm getting the algorithm to program this in Excel VBA to determine bottom hole pressure. So if we go down, this is section 4.4.1 explains kind of where the average temperature and compressibility factor method comes from and why it's used. Um, it's essentially an energy balance. Uh, so if you think of Bernoulli's equation, um, that it goes along the lines of that. You know, you have pressure head, uh, velocity head. Uh, in this case, they're ignoring velocity head, but you have elevation head, and then you have frictional losses. Uh, that's essentially what we're doing. So the equations we're going to use in this analysis is highlighted right here, 4.54. This basically... Uh, calculates the bottom hole flowing pressure as a result of the surface measurements and then here's a constant s it's got your average compressibility factor and average temperature in it and then this equation right here is your frictional losses um, I don't really suggest this one but we're going to use it because it's easy uh, so just uh, let's go ahead and do that and then they give Essentially, they have a spreadsheet we're going to apply today, average tz.xls, and uh, they actually have a solution here for these parameters. Our solution is uh, 1,082. We're going to compare it to that. So let's go ahead and step into Excel. Here's our Excel spreadsheet from uh, Petroleum Production Systems, a computer-assisted approach. This is his uh, solution that he came up with. Uh, the author came up with but before we get started um, just keep in mind the basic steps the algorithm we're going to use is uh, we're going to apply these steps number one you're going to have to assume a bottom hole flowing pressure and then you're number two you're going to have to compute the average wellbore temperature and pressure across the segment of interest uh, so essentially you can divide a wellbore up into one segment or multiple segments in this case we're just going to look at one segment uh, just to demonstrate how to use this because he did that in this case um, and then um, step three you want to calculate the fluid properties and the z factor at the average temperature and pressure from step two and then calculate the friction factor we're going to use that simple correlation uh, I can't pronounce his name but uh, it's that correlation or that uh, equation in the book I just showed and then calculate the bottom hole flowing pressure after you do that and then you're going to iterate until the uh, repeat steps two through five until the bottom hole flowing pressure converges and this is kind of the basic approach to any correlation to determine bottom hole flowing pressure so I suggest you pause the video and kind of digest the steps here because if you want to go code another correlation you're probably going to do the same thing uh, so let's go ahead and look at the code uh, step through it so to start writing the code you need to um, create a function um, in Excel VBA I called it bottom hole pressure from average PZT method and it takes the following arguments wellhead flowing or wellhead pressure <laughs> flow rate diameter length of the well bore temperature at the wellhead temperature at the bottom hole conditions and then relative roughness for our friction factor and then you're going to want to go and actually determine your average temperature because you got to provide an initial guess so you need to calculate average temperature and then calculate a friction factor from the relative roughness and then initialize your old value because you're going to iterate and you're going to have to compare it to something until uh, your pressure converges so we need two pressure values in this case um, or two pressure variables one to hold the old value and one to hold the new value so you're going to initialize your first pressure at any value you want I chose the wellhead pressure in this case it works for for this code um, I've tested it and then calculate an average pressure and then you're gonna calculate a average z factor and so this is where your loop starts where you 
try to iterate until your pressure converges where the new pressure and the old pressure approximately equal each other and that's kind of the stopping criteria I used right here when the uh, relative error gets less than 0 0.005 that seems to work really well and so um, I set our our new our old pressure to the new pressure and then I go through and I calculate using those equations that we saw in the book calculate a bottom hole pressure and then I calculate a new average pressure and then the new Z factor and then I compare the new average pressure to the old average pressure and continue to iterate and then once I'm done I return the bottom hole pressure and that's my solution and that's the end of the function there's also some extra functions you have to use in this case uh, there's several function calls I made in the main method one is the average temperature here I use a uh, a the use this average temperature and remember when you're dealing with gases um, you have to use degrees Rankine to uh, apply these uh, calculate fluid properties and that sort of thing in this case I'm returning the average temperature in degrees Fahrenheit using a a uh, log approximation of the average temperature you can use you know just a linear approximation uh, it's up to you here's our friction factor function the same we saw in the book and then after that here's our Z factor I use the Hall and Yerbro correlation the one we've I've showed before and then you have to calculate pseudo reduced pressure pseudo reduced temperature and then you have to go through all this uh, all the stipulations to get a Z factor and uh, you know that you can go back and watch the previous videos but you have to apply some numerical methods to do it the Newton Rapsom I apply here and then um, after all that you know here's your part of your Newton Rapsom you gotta take uh, your function value and the derivative of the function value but don't get confused with that I'm just stepping through this real fast uh, look at the code online or pause and review this video um, I would suggest you code it by yourself you'll just learn so much more than me just telling you what to do so that's kinda how it works now let's go compare it to the textbook example problem so I've pulled in the Excel VBA code and this is our textbook example problem and this is the spreadsheet the guy who uses it's actually online uh, so when you put in these gas properties and uh, tubing diameters and well bore characteristics you get a value of 1082 as the bottom hole pressure at a depth of 10,000 feet so this is what I replicated in his spreadsheet and now let's compare it to the Excel VBA code that I just showed you guys so it's gonna take arguments of wellhead pressure in this case it's gonna be PHF that he calls here flow rate tubing diameter length temperature at the wellhead temperature at the bottom of the wellbore relative roughness gas specific gravity and then mole fractions he doesn't have impurities this is for our z-factor correlation so he probably uses something different but bang check that out so the textbook problem got 1082 as shown here and in his spreadsheet we got 1083 that is pretty darn close now we can go change these parameters what if the gas specific gravity is bigger like 0.9 and what if the tubing size is bigger like 2.8 825 and the length of our well bore is 8,000 feet yeah I know I'm just changing some stuff up 150 250 different flow rate let's say 10,000 and then I do his solution his solution gets 1510 psi I get 1,508 so check that out that is I mean that validates the model the code that we created and I can even do it again I can change like 
Let's change the flow rate to 8,000. Let's do a shorter well, 6,000. Relative roughness of a little bit smaller. Calculate it, 841, 841. I mean, bang. So that's it, guys. You should really learn how to code. Uh, it's a it's like a superpower and I suggest anybody in engineering really needs to invest some time into it um, You will be a top dog engineer like myself and you will be valued among your peers uh, But if you like the video um, please subscribe and uh, We're gonna cover more stuff. Uh, this was a sidetrack from reservoir engineering because in the previous decline curve analysis I I used bottom hole pressures, but I didn't calculate them, so I kind of felt like uh, we were missing something there. Here, I applied the average temperature and compressibility factor method, and you could use this on your dry gas wells. Uh, so the code is online, um, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Adios.